Anyone who has taken an exam knows how difficult it is to provide paragraph-length responses to open-ended questions as opposed to simple yes and no, or multiple-choice questions due to language and other issues. In the realm of natural language processing, such long-form question answering has comparable issues, since existing techniques tend to focus on two key job components, information retrieval and synthesis. Up until very recently, natural language processing artificial intelligences have more or less just made up things when asked about facts, which made them rather useless in that domain. An OpenAI research team combines these current methodologies with better training objectives in the new study Web GPT, browser-assisted question answering with human feedback. For high-quality synthesis, they use the Microsoft Bing Web Search API for content retrieval and unsupervised pre-training and fine-tuning on the GPT-3 big language model. They then utilize human input to optimize response quality directly, allowing their technique to perform at human levels on question and answer tasks. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you the incredible performance on this new GPT-3 upgrade, how it could translate to similar models, and finally, what it means for AI to accurately answer questions. The following is a list of the team's major contributions. They establish a text-based web browsing environment that can be interacted with by a fine-tuned language model. This allows them to use broad approaches like imitation learning and reinforcement learning to increase both retrieval and synthesis in an end-to-end -end manner. They create responses with references, which are paragraphs collected by the model when surfing online pages. This is critical for labelers to be able to assess the factual correctness of responses without having to engage in a time-consuming and subjective process of independent investigation. Because they're dumber than the ordinary human, negative actors investing in duping others, to utilize these sorts of technologies have little immediate utility. It's easy to image a troll farm worker repeatedly typing, create, until the AI generates a decent fake, but that's not how these campaigns function. There are a lot of easier ways to create false text. For example, a bad actor may use a few simple crawling algorithms to find the most popular statements on a radical political forum. Modern search engines are strong, speedy, and capable of delivering up-to-date information. As a result, people are increasingly relying on search engines to get answers to their problems, estimates of our daily web searches number in the billions. As a result, the OpenAI researchers set out to create a text-based online browsing environment that would allow language models to emulate human web search behavior. The suggested web GPT model conducts web-based tasks like as doing a Bing search, clicking on links, scrolling through papers, and extracting references and quotes when given a query and some contextual and supporting information. Browsing continues until the model provides an end of browsing command, the maximum number of actions is reached, or the total length of references is achieved. Finally, if at least one relevant reference is found, the model generates a long-form response to the inquiry. The researchers also created a graphical interface for their text-based web browsing environment, allowing users to add supplemental comments and compare scores to help the model grasp the queries better. The researchers employed four major training strategies to fine-tune GPT-3 models in the 760M, 13B, and 175B sizes – behavior cloning, reward modeling, reinforcement learning, and rejection sampling. They tested the proposed web GPT on questions from the Explain Like I'm 5 subreddit, with human evaluators making decisions based on the criterion that replies be relevant, logical, and backed up by credible sources. In the tests, the 175 billion best of 64 web GPT models responses were chosen 56% of the time over those produced by human demonstrators and 69% of the time over the reference answers from the ELI-5 dataset. Overall, the research shows that using a fine-tuned pre-trained language model and a text-based web browsing environment, a fine-tuned pre-trained language model can achieve excellent answer quality on LFQA tasks, even beating humans on the ELI-5 dataset. The researchers discovered that GPT-3's writing might impact readers' perceptions on foreign diplomacy issues in studies. The researchers gave participants a sample of GPT-3's tweets regarding the U.S. Army departure from Afghanistan and U.S. sanctions against China. They discovered that the messaging persuaded participants in both scenarios. 
Following the publication of posts against China sanctions, for example, the percentage of respondents who stated they were opposed to such a strategy more than doubled. GPT-3 was used by Georgetown University researchers over half a year to spew forth false information. It was programmed to create lengthy articles, basic paragraphs, and bite-sized pieces to replicate social media posts like tweets, according to the researchers. The TLDR version of the story is that the researchers discovered that the publications were largely ineffective for duping people into believing false information, so they concentrated on the tweet-sized messages. This is because GPT-3 is a gibberish generator that uses brute force to imitate human writing. GPT-3 has been described as awesome and powerful, but at the end of the day, it's about as effective as asking a library, not a librarian, but the building itself, a question and then randomly flipping through all the books that match the subject with your eyes closed and pointing at a sentence. That statement might be moving while yet making no sense. In the real world, this implies that if you ask GPT-3, who was the first president of the United States? It would respond, George Washington was the first US president, he served from April 30, 1789 to March 4, 1797. Isn't that something to brag about? However, it's equally as likely, if not more likely, to spit forth gibberish. George Washington was a nice pants to yellow elephant, it would say. It's also possible that it'll spit out something bigoted or unpleasant. It was honed on the internet, with Reddit accounting for a sizable chunk of that. The argument is this. AI, including GPT-3, has no idea what it's saying. On command, AI is unable to manufacture high-quality disinformation. You can't just say to GPT-3, yo, computer, tell me some falsehoods about Hillary Clinton that will drive left-wingers crazy, or explain why Donald Trump is a space alien that eats puppies and expect a rational response. It must be carefully vetted by humans where it does work, in short-form tweet-sized bits. The researchers believe that after reading GPT-3's generated text, humans were more inclined to agree with disinformation, as shown in the following sample from the Wired article. But, seriously? Were the same people more inclined to believe rubbish as a result of, notwithstanding, or in spite of the fact that GPT-3 had authored the nonsense? Because it's far cheaper, faster, and easier for a regular person to come up with BS that makes sense than it is for the world's most powerful text generator. Finally, as the Wired article points out, malicious actors would need a lot more than GPT-3 to launch a successful misinformation operation. It's a hit or miss proposition for GPT-3 to output text like, climate change is the new global warming. That renders it ineffective for troll farms that profit from spreading false information. They are already aware of the most effective talking points for radicalizing people, and they are concentrating on developing them from as many sources as possible. GPT the third of may impact individuals in the future, but it isn't now, duping, most people. Humans will always be eager to believe anything if it benefits them, but persuading someone who is on the fence usually requires more than a tweet from an untrustworthy source. Final thoughts. The science is solid, however the media portrayal vastly exaggerates the capabilities of these systems. Artificial intelligence generated disinformation should be a major source of concern. However, based on the findings of this study, there's no reason to suppose GPT-3 or comparable systems currently pose a disinformation danger that may sway people's hearts and minds against truth. Even the most modest human villains have a long way to go before AI can be as nasty as them. So, what do you think of this new and exciting way in which GPT-3 manages to answer rather complicated questions compared to what it was able to answer just a few months ago? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.